Hello and welcome to another edition of Tuesdays with the Disability Policy for All. Today we had the great fortune to be talking to Janet Lord, who is with the Harvard Project on Disabilities. Um, this summer, you may or may not know this, but this summer is the International Month for People with Disability. So it is so exciting to be talking to Janet about international issues as well as the C C R P D, which stands for the Convention on the Rights of People with Disability. So welcome, Janet. Thank you, Liz, very much for inviting me. The first question is, why haven't why haven't the U.S. ever passed the Convention on the Rights of People with Disability? Considering 25 years ago, we passed the ADA. That is a great question that many of us are still asking ourselves. Um, and you're right, we have passed the ADA and other disability rights laws and really around the world. Uh, disability advocates and governments and allies in the disability field look to us as um, really leaders um, in disability rights, disability law, disability policy. So one would think that a convention that was very much inspired by the ADA would be something that we could very easily ratify here in the United States. Um, but as we know, our Government is not working so well all the time, and I think it's very politicized to have a treaty ratified by the Senate because it requires a large number of senators, 67, and they don't agree on much of anything these days. So I think it's not so much the content of the CRPD, which is very much inspired by the ADA, but I think it is um, a suspicion of treaties and a reluctance to engage internationally in human rights treaties. Thank you. Can you explain what ratify mean versus pass? In yes, me? great great question. So in international law, the first step in becoming a full party to a treaty is to sign the treaty. Now this Signing doesn't mean the treaty is binding. That's just the first step. Um, and different countries have different ways of going about through their legal system of making a treaty um, effective in their system. So the first step is signing, and then a country will take whatever steps it needs to take in order to ratify the treaty. And maybe they have to adopt a law and put that into place first. Um, it different it varies so ratification is the final step and that means the treaty has been um, fully adopted and is legally binding so in the United States we did sign the treaty President Obama signed it in 2009 but we have not ratified it and therefore we have not yet um, uh, signaled you know we have not accepted it as binding law unfortunately Yes, unfortunately. Why is it important for self advocates to be involved in advocating for the passage of CDR, C R P D? Well, Liz, that is another really good question, and um, I've asked myself over the many past many years, why is it important for us to participate in the CRPD? What does it give us as uh, advocates as disability rights ad advocates and I think um, it is another really important tool that we can use to advance disability rights um, and for those of us who do international work um, it is a common language that we can have and we can be part of this global effort 
um, and self-advocates have a huge amount to offer uh, the community here in the United States and as well as internationally so we need to be part of that common language and I've, I've experienced uh, self-advocates doing really innovative disability rights education work using the CRPD as a tool. Uh, so a group in Minnesota advocating change together has done wonderful work using the CRPD as an educational tool um, in, in, through their networks and um, they have found it incredibly empowering um, and just a really useful advocacy method. Okay. Thank you. And the last question is, is there anything else that I missed or that you would like to talk about? Well, thanks for that opportunity. I, I guess I would encourage us all as we're heading into December and celebrating International, uh, International Day and, and the month, um, that we think about how our work as disability advocates here in the United States connects to a much larger global movement um, of advocates around the world. And I think it can help us in our own advocacy to think about that and to think that we are connected to a larger disability rights movement and a larger human rights movement. Um, and, and we're needed. Uh, we've got allies around the world uh, from whom we can learn and with whom we can collaborate and share good experiences. Thank you. If there's any, if you have any questions about this or any other policy issues, please go to the AUCG webpage and look for this week's In Brief. And if you have any questions or comments about this week's Tuesdays with Liz, please leave them in this space below. Thank you again, Janice. Thank you, Liz, very much for having me. Bye. Bye-bye.